Shabbat Shalom. Is it too loud? Is it okay? Okay. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you for joining us. I hope that the different format will not scare you. Some of us like it. And I hope that at the end of the evening, all of you will say, oh, what a great idea. We have to do it again when Marcy is not here. When Marcy is here, the bima is hers. Since we are sitting around the tables, we're going to have a ordinary, regular service, but with little changes. So we have challah here, we have the wine here, not only for a little sip at the very end, but we have wine around the tables. I was told that there is also grape juice in teachers. I don't see, but my eyesight is not good. Well, let's start, okay? So let's begin with the traditional words of Hine Matov Humanayim, which means how wonderful for us to be together around a large table welcoming Shabbat. I'm choosing this melody because my youngest son, who had his bar mitzvah last week, said that he might come to help me because now he's an adult. Only that he was so tired when he came back from school and he fell asleep. So this is known as the Miami Beach Choir. It's a group of young ultra-Orthodox boys who have extremely high voice. I don't, but together we will sing it. Please join me. Hine matov humanaim shevet achim gam yachad. Hine matov humanaim shevet achim gam yachad. Hine. Hine, hine, matov. Huma, 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 naim. And that's the part. Oi, 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 shevet achim, shevet achim, gam yachad. Shevet achim, oi, achim, gam yachad. Again. Hine matov humanaim shevet achim gam yachad. Hine matov humanaim shevet achim gam yachad. Hine, hine, hine matov huma, huma, huma naim. Oy, 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 shevet achim, shevet achim, gam yachdav. Shevet achim, oy, achim, gam yachdav. And if you're sitting near candles, so please light your Shabbat candles. After you, I'll light mine. Remember, Shabbat candles is the only act that we first perform the act, and only day we say, then we say the blessing. Thank you. Traditionally, before we say the blessing, first we light the candles. Then we close our eyes in order not to see the lights. And after we close our eyes, we draw three circles. And still with our eyes closed. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech 
העולם, אשר קידשנו במצוותיו, וציוונו להדליק נר, להדליק נר של שבת. And we open our eyes, light! No, that's really the idea behind it. And now, Kiddush, do you all have wine in your cups? So please pour wine. You know what's the problem with red wine? If we don't, fi oh, forget about staining. This is cheap tablecloth. If we don't finish it, we have about a day or two to finish it. Then it all goes. So, and we have to get in shape for Passover. We're only, what, 10 days before Passover? OK, so pour wine now. And please feel free to drink throughout the night. We have 11 bottles. Waste is one of the greatest sins in our tradition. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Borei peri hagafen Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher kidashanu bemitzvotav Veratzavanu Veshabbat kodsho באהבה וברצון הנחילנו זיכרון למעשה וראשית כי הוא יום תחילה למקראי קודש זכר ליציאת מצרים כיוונו וכארת ואותנו קידשת מכל העמים ושבת קודשך באהבה וברצון הנחלתנו ברוך אתה אדוני מקדש השבת לחיים It's better than the regular many shevets If you look at the tables we also have challah normally we do the amotzi at the end but why doing at the end when we have the challah here so feel free to eat the challah. If you look at, if you see all these funny things in the middle, this yellow stuff, our challah baking group came this morning to bake fresh challahs, and there is cheese inside. Okay, so it's sort of inside out pizza, whatever you want to call it. Hamotzi lechem min ha'aretz We give thanks to God for bread Our voices rise in song together As I joyful prayer is said Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam Hamotzi lechem min ha'aretz. And after we say the blessing, we have to eat a tiny bit, at least, of challah. Hmm, it's really good. Thank you, Dana and the group of challah bakers. Ready to continue with Kabbalah Shabbat, with the prayers of Shabbat? Omemu Adonai Eloheinu veishtachavu 
Lehaha Kocho O Memu Adonai Eloheinu Vehistachavu Lehaha Kocho Ki 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 Kadosh Adonai Eloheinu O Memu Ki 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 kadosh Adonai Eloheinu Romemu Romemu Adonai Eloheinu Veishtachavu Lehar Kocho Romemu Adonai Eloheinu Veishtachavu Lehar Kocho Ki Ki, ki kadosh Adonai Eloheinu Romemu Ki, ki, ki kadosh Adonai Eloheinu Romemu Lecha dodi Lecha dodi Lecha Oh, no, that's the wrong one now, I'm taking suggestions. What do you want? Lechadodi likrat kala pene shabbat nekabelam. Lechadodi likrat kala pene shabbat nekabelam. Shamor v'zachor b'dibur echad ishmianu El ha-meyuchad Adonai echad Hu shemo echad l'shem ul-tiferet V'elitilam l'echad odi l'ikrat kahala Penei Shabbat nekabelam Lechadodi likrat kahala Penei Shabbat nekabelam Likrat Shabbat lechu venel chaki mekor Haberacha merosh mikedem Nehesucha sof maase Bemachshava tchila Lechadodi likrat kahala Penei Shabbat nekabela Lechadodi likrat kahala Penei Shabbat nekabela Hitoreri, hitoreri kiva orech Kumi ori, uri, uri Shihir daberi kevod Adonai Alaich nigla Lechadodi likrat kahala Penei Shabbat nekabela Lechadodi likrat kala Penei Shabbat nekabelam And now if you have the strength, we rise as we face the entrance. The image that the composers of these prayers had was of a wedding. And before the bride arrives, everyone rises. We still do it, right? turns around and welcomes the bride. So for them, Shabbat was the bride. Bohi v'shalom ateret balagam besimcham hu v'tzolato chemunei ham segula bohi chalam Bo'i chala lechadodi likrat kahala Penei Shabbat nekabela 
לחדודי לקראת כלה תני שבת נקבלם This is normally the time that we reflect on the past week and try to recall some good things that happened to us, things that make us feel grateful. So the one school, our fabulous preschool, had an art exhibit that was really impressive. It was really, really nice. And our lovely bakers who came and worked hard for us to have this fresh, homemade challah. And personally, I had a very interesting last weekend that was really, really wonderful. Is there anyone else who would like to share something good that happened to you? My great nephew got married last weekend in New Jersey, and I lived through an earthquake. You, oh, right, the earthquake on Friday. Wow, mazel tov. So what should we say mazel tov for? The earthquake or the wedding of your nephew? <laughs> or double? Thank you, Carol. Anyone else would like to? I'll just follow. You have to scream. I know that you have a huge voice when you want. You got your, I'm sorry. Oh, mazel tov. Anyone else? So let's look. Oh, is that John? I think I did. School for me, Mazel Tov. I got to hear one of your three sermons that you read. Oh, you got to hear one of my three sermons that I read. I was so happy that I brought it with me. Yeah, no, during my son's bar mitzvah, I, I used notes, and I said that it happened to me probably three times before. I didn't trust myself, and I'm happy. But it was so awkward. I really, I looked at it, what, what are you doing? And I needed both hands, and one of them I held. I, I don't know. It was a little awkward, but I did it. My granddaughter, Michaela, made National Honor Society. I believe it. If you're saying, why wouldn't we believe you? <laughs> Woodworking competition. Wow, that's quite amazing. Woodworking. Wow. I think that most of us, when we went to school, girls did not do that. Boys, maybe, right? We, but girls. Those of you who like to read, Tana French has a new book, and the girl in the book actually is learning to be a carpenter. I just started the book, it's, uh, but oh, you, you already spoke, come on. <laughs> wow, you did well with your grandchildren. <laughs> okay, so let's continue with the prayer of gratitude that begins with the Hebrew word of tov. What is tov? Good. Lehodot is from the Hebrew word toda, which means thank you. And this is to say thank you. And la Adonai, Adonai is God. So good to say thank you, God, or thank you to God. Tov lehodot l'adonai, tov lehodot l'adonai, hu lezamer, hu lezamer, l'shimcha elyon, tov lehodot l'adonai. Tov lehodot l'adonai, Tov lehodot l'adonai, Hu lezamer, hu lezamer, 
לשמחה העליון, טוב להודות לאדוני, להגיד בבוקר חסדך, להגיד בבוקר חסדך. ואמונתך בלילות, ואמונתך בלילות, טוב להודות לאדוני, טוב להודות לאדוני, טוב להודות לאדוני. ולזמר ולזמר לשמחה עליון, טוב להודות לאדוני, להגיד בבוקר חסדך, להגיד בבוקר חסדך. ואמונתך בלילות, ואמונתך בלילות, טוב להודות לאדוני. And we welcome the angels who join us for Shabbat. Shalom Aleichem. Shalom Aleichem, Malachi HaSharet. מלאכי עליון, מי מלך מלכי המלאכים הקדוש ברוך הוא. בואכם לשלום מלאכי השלום מלאכי עליון, מי מלך מלכי המלאכים הקדוש ברוך הוא. ברוך הוא נילא שלום, מלאכי השלום. מלאכי עליון, מי מלך מלכי המלאכים הקדוש ברוך הוא. צאתכם לשלום מלאכי השלום מלאכי עליון, מי מלך מלאכי המלאכים הקדוש ברוך הוא. When you hear the word Kaddish, what comes to mind? Death, right? Your side, funeral. But Kaddish is a beautiful prayer, and there are about six different kinds of Kaddish. Only one of them is the mourner's Kaddish. In a traditional prayer service, we say Kaddish many, many times. One of the reasons, by the way, is that originally there were many different options for when to say the Kaddish. Then they printed the prayer book, and they started to do it whenever they saw an option to say Kaddish. So in, if you go to an Orthodox service, you'll say Kaddish a million times. But now we're going to do what we call the Chatzik Kaddish, the abbreviated Kaddish. And we say it now in order to separate the two parts of the service of Friday night. So what did we did so far is called Kabbalat Shabbat, welcoming of Shabbat. We sang, we did some things. And now we start with the evening prayer that will begin with the words of Baruch Hu. And to separate them, we say the Chatzik Kaddish. OK? It gadahal ve'it kadash mei rabah be'al ma'adi v'achirutei ve'amlich malchutei be'chai e'chon hu v'yom e'chon 
ובחיי דכל בית ישראל. בעגלה, בעגלה, ובזמן קריב, וימרו אמן. יהי שמי רבה מבורך, לעולם ולעולמי עולמיה, יתברך. יתברך וישתבח, ויתפאר ויתרומם ויתנשא, ויתהדר ויתהלה ויתהלל, שמי דקודשא בריכו. לעילה מן כל ברכתה ושירתה, תוש בחתה ונחמתה. דעה מהירן בעלמא, ואמרו אמן. So this section that we just finished of Kabbalat Shabbat is really new. It's only 500 years old. But tradition, when you look at the Talmud, when you look at all the books, they didn't have it. Evening service, every service, every evening, including Friday, begins with the words of Baruch Hu, as we invite everyone to join us to pray. So traditionally we rise, and as we rise, what we like to do here is to take a moment and to greet our neighbors with Shabbat Shalom, good Shabbos, Shabbos again, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom again, Mark. Die, 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 die. Yeah, la, 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 la. Yeah, la, 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 la. Yeah, la, 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 la. Yeah, la, 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 la. יאללהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלהלה
ומבדיל בין יום ובין לילה, אדוני צבאות שמו אל חי וקיים, תמיד ימלוך עלינו לעולם ועד. ברוך אתה אדוני המעריב ערבים. And before we continue with Shema, I would like to invite you to close your eyes for a moment. Take a deep breath in and breathe out. Breathe in again and breathe out the stress, the fears, the anxieties of the past week. Try to let go of everything you need to let go of. And take a moment to talk to God and to listen to what God is saying to you. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevod Malchuto Le'olam va'ed, and we open our eyes. Ve'ahavta ha'et Adonai Elohecha Bechol levavcha uvechol nafshecha Uvechol meodecha Ve'ahayu ha'dvarim ha'ele אשר אנוכי מצבך היום על לבביך ושיננתם לבניך ודיברת בם בשבתך בביתך ובלכתך בדרך ובשוכבך ובקומך וקשרתם לאות על ידיך, והיו לתותפות בין עיניך, וכתבתם על מזוזות ביתך ובשעריך. למען תזכרו ועשיתם את כל מצוותי. ואיתם קדושים לאלוהיכם. אני אדוני אלוהיכם, אשר הוצאתי אתכם מארץ מצרים, להיות לכם לאלוהים. אני אדוני אלוהיכם. אמת. You shall love Adonai, your God, with all your heart. Take to heart these instructions which I charge you this day. Impress them upon your children. Recite them when you stay at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you get up. Bind them as a sign in your hand and let them serve as a symbol on your forehead. Inscribe them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Thus you shall remember and do all of my commandments and be holy for your God. I am Adonai, your God, who led you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am Adonai, your God. Lai, 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 la, lai, la, lai, la, 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 ya, lai, lai, la, lai, la, 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 ya, lai, lai, ya, lai, la, 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 ya, la, lai, la, ya, la, lai, la, la, 
מכמוך בא אלים אדוני, מכמוך נעדר בקודש, נורת תהילות אוסף אליהם, נורת תהילות אוסף שיר החדשה שיפחו גאולים לשמך על שפת הים יחד כולם הודו או ממליכו ואמרו אדוני ימלוך לעולם ועד אדוני ימלוך לעולם ועד לי 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 ושמרו בני ישראל את השבת לעשות את השבת לדורותם ברית עולם again ושמרו בני ישראל את השבת לעשות את השבת לדורותם ברית עולם די 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 ביני ובין בני ישראל אותי לעולם כי ששת ימים עשה אדוני את השמיים ואת הארץ וביום השביעי שבת ויהי נפש וביום השביעי שבת ויהי נפש די 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 יאי די 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 יאי די 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 ושמרו בני ישראל את השבת לעשות את השבת לדורותם ברית עולם. This week and next week, the Torah portions have a lot to say about skin diseases. Let's start with that song. Thank you very much. I would like to sing a song of protest that I wrote. It's the only song of protest I ever wrote. I wrote this song because I got very angry that all the people who, the songwriters, who are always writing songs about the heart because they think the heart is the only thing we have that has anything to do with love. And we've got all these other dandy organs inside of us that must have something to do with love, but you never hear any songs about it. You never hear a song called, Be Careful, It's My Pancreas, or My Liver Cries For You, You Are Always In My Kidneys. In this so I wrote one 
about something that I think is every bit as important to have as a heart, and I'd like to sing it for you now. <coughs> you gotta have skin. <laughs> All you really need is skin. <laughs> Skin's the thing that if you got it outside, it helps keep your insides in. <laughs> it covers your nose. And it's wrapped around your toes. <laughs> and inside it, you put lemon meringue. What? And outside, you hang your clothes. <laughs> Skin is what you feel at home is. And without it, furthermore, both your liver and abdomen <laughs> would keep falling on the floor. And you'd be wrapped dressed in your intestine, a sigh of east wind. Needs an extra set of skin When the doctor knows that you're feeling sick Where does he stick his needle in? In the end of your skin So it's really funny. I got the idea from an article by Professor Debbie Zeigner um, who grew up with uh, the humor of Alan Sherman when she went to camp. So he's making a really important point here, right? We sing about the heart. It's a parody of a song, uh, Heart, from uh, Damn Yankees that was popular back then. And he says that skin is really important. And when you read the Torah, you figure out that skin is really important. First of all, because that's what people saw, right? Back then, or even until recently, you can have a tumor the size of a baseball inside you and nobody will know. Think about it, without all the modern technology, we don't know. But if you have something on your skin, well, everyone sees it. So the Torah, as well as other societies, were quite obsessed with skin diseases. Because as Alan Sherman says it in a funny way, that's exactly the way the Torah saw it, the skin is the border of our body. It's the boundaries of our body. And we, as individuals and as a society, don't like our, boundar our boundaries to be breached, to be invaded. We want our boundaries to be intact. And when our body, when our skin is not, is breached, we expose our flesh to the world. There is really nothing that protects our body from the rest of the world. And that's why the skin was so important. And the next two portions, Tazria and Metzora, talk about this skin disease. Normally we call it leprosy, but I want you to know that these things have nothing to do with modern leprosy. Some modern scholars refer to it as a scale disease. It's just your skin started to look different. What do you do? You don't call a doctor, you call the priest. Because the priest knew to determine when this skin disease has something to do with your spiritual well-being. If it makes you unholy, and if that's the case, if the priest diagnoses you with tsara'at, with just, I'll use the word leprosy even though it's not accurate, they would send you out of the camp. Now, because the people who keep the integrity of their body stay in, the out, those who don't go out, and then the priest comes once in a while to check on you, and when your skin is healed, there is a ceremony and you come back to the camp. Okay, so in other words, having the skin diseases render you impure, meaning you have to be outside because you threaten the wholeness, perhaps even holiness, of our society. The word for wholeness in Hebrew is a word that each one of you knows. You just don't think about it as wholeness. What is it? Shalom. Okay, shalom, we say peace. But literally, shaloms come from the word shalem, whole, complete. Okay, so when your skin is not, well, you're not whole, 
We want the society to be whole. And that's why the Torah begins by talking about our skin, which covers our body. And then there are two other kinds of this leprosy or tzarat. The next one is the tzarat of the garments. If there are some funny things on your garments, again, the priest checks. And if it's really tzarat, we have to treat it in a special way because the garments are the boundaries of the skin. If the skin is the boundary of the body, the garments are the b boundaries of the body. Uh, uh, yeah, the skin is about, uh, uh, the, the garments are the boundaries of the skin. And the third thing is the house, because the house is the boundaries of the garments. Okay? So when you have this tzarat, you go out of camp. However, there are other ideas in the Bible in which actually tzarat or people who are inflicted with this skin disease have some special powers. There is an expression that sometimes we use towards others. Why don't you grow some thick skin? Right? Don't be so sensitive. Okay, so I said it. Why do you have to be like that? Learn to take criticism well, right? So thick skin. And in the last several years, some books were written about thin skin or thick skin. So yeah, thick skin, sometimes it's easier to navigate the world. But people with thin skin, the sensitive ones, are those who are also sensitive to the world. They hear the sounds that other people don't hear. They see light. It may cause them some pain, but they can see light in a different way. They notice things. Because when you're sensitive, it's all, not only to what somebody tells you, but you're sensitive to everything around you and you notice. You pay more attention. And there is a beautiful story in the Book of Kings, Second Kings, that illustrates it beautifully, and I want us to read it. So the backdrop against which this story was written is a war between Israel, ancient Israel, and the Arameans. And Israel did not do well. The city of Samaria, of Shomron, was under siege People were starving. There was no food. There was no water. And the mighty army of the Arameans was just about to destroy them. Okay, that's the backdrop in the Book of Kings. The Book of Kings has a lot of history. So let's read it. There were four men, lepers, outside the gate. As I told you, you have this leprosy, you're out. They say to one another, why should we sit here waiting for death? If we decide to go into the town, what, what with the famine in the town, we shall die there. So they say, if we go back to the town of Israel, where we came from, to Samaria, they have no food, they have no water, definitely they won't share it with us, we lepers, right? So what will happen to us? We'll die. And if we just sit here outside of the camp, well, we'll die because we have nothing. Come, let us desert to the Aramean camp. If they let us live, we shall live. And if they put us to death, we shall but die. Look at the irony here. So the four lepers, the four Jewish lepers, Israel lepers, realized that the only chance that they have to survive was not to go back to their place, to their, their city, but to the enemy city. So maybe they'll give us some food because they have food. Maybe they will have some pity and compassion, but we have no chance going back to our people. So these are the lepers outside. Remember, sensitive, paying more attention. They set out at twilight for the Aramean camp, but when they came to the edge of the Aramean camp, there was no one there. For God had caused the Aramean camp to hear a sound of chariots, a sound of horses, the din of huge army. They said to one another, the king of Israel must have hired the kings of the Hittites and the kings of Mitzrayim, of Egypt, to attack us. So all the soldiers fled 
because God made them hear noises, meaning God sent them some false intelligence, according to which Israel just had a treaty with two very strong armies, with the Egyptian army and the Hittite army. If you know the map of Israel, you know where is Egypt in the south? The Hittites were in the north. Okay, so they thought, wow, Israel, now with the Hittites and the Egyptians, the two huge countries, empires, we are done. So they all, let's see what happened. And they fled headlong in the twilight, abandoning their tents and horses and donkeys. The entire camp just sat just as it was as they fled for their lives. When those lepers came to the edge of the camp, they went into one of the tents and ate and drank. Then they carried off silver and gold and clothing from there and buried it. They came back and went into another tent and they carried off what was there and buried it. Well, they found some booty. So they took it and buried it. Why did they bury it? Yeah, they can they have it later. They couldn't take it back to Israel because they were not allowed to go back to Israel. They were lepers. So, okay, let's bury it. And when our leprosy, when our skin is intact again, then we'll go back and dig out the treasure that we have and we'll be rich. But remember, the people of Israel were starving. And where was the food? With the Arameans. So then they said to one another, we're not doing right. This is a day of good news, and we are keeping silent. If we went until the light of morning, we shall incur guilt. Come, let us go and inform the king's palace. These are the good people. They could have been very rich, keep everything for themselves. And that was their initial idea, but then they felt that it was wrong. That was not the right thing to do. Said, so let's inform Israel. They'll be able to eat and they'll have access to the booty and they will be able eventually to defeat the Arameans. So who are the really good guys here? The four lepers. Uh, is there another one? They went and called out to the gatekeepers of the city and told them, we have been to the Aramean camp, there is not a soul there, nor any human soul, but the horses are, uh, are tethered and the donkeys are tethered and the tents are undisturbed and we ended here so they went and spread the word and eventually Israel defeated the Arameans and all that because of the lepers okay so giving all this credit to the lepers those who were the people outside of the camp those are the people with not only a thin skin they had sick skin that made them even more sensitive they noticed what was really happening there. They were able to see the miracle that God had performed for them, and the four lepers saved Israel from a huge defeat. Because Tzara'at skin, yes, it can get ill and has all these bad things, but skin also is, has some really good things. There is a doctor who writes a lot and had a beautiful TED talk some years ago. His name is Abraham uh, Vergas. He teaches at Stanford Medical School. He's a serious guy who uses the cutting edge technology and teaches it. But he said the most magical tool that the doctor has and he said, unfortunately, not many doctors use it anymore, is correct. A hand, meaning the skin. And the hand, why it's so magical? Because the hand touches, the hand comforts, the hand diagnoses, and the hand can administer treatment. And he said, of course, today we don't even need it, or he believes that doctors do need to do all the things that I mentioned. We can look at all the images and all the things, but without the hand, we're not doing our job as physicians. And this is the other side of the skin. So the skin is the border of our bodies, what separates us 
from the rest, but also the skin is the thing that helps us to communicate, to get together with others. Nothing can really replace a good hug, right? When somebody really needs a hug. And the hand, according to him, is a magical instrument that should be used more often by physicians. And let me just conclude with a story that I will not tell you tonight. I'll save it for Wednesday. So anyone who wants to join me for the class on Wednesday will hear it, because on Wednesday I'm talking about Elijah the prophet. Because during Passover, we are going to have Elijah. Hopefully, he'll come to our Seder. We're even going to pour him a, a glass of wine. And Elijah is the most fascinating character we have. And the story that I'm not going to tell you is about Rabbi Joshua, son of Levi, who met Elijah and asked him, where's the Messiah? I want to meet the Messiah. Elijah was the harbinger. He was the one who will announce the coming of the Messiah. And from the context of what I just said, where do you think the Messiah is? Among the lepers. He said, go to Rome and outside of the gate, because the lepers were always outside of the gates of the city, and he told him how to recognize the Messiah, one of the lepers. Okay, so on one hand, our weekly portions warn us from this tzarat, from these people with these skin diseases because we don't want our skin, the border of our body, to be compromised, but at the same time, those who do have these compromised sins have these extra powers from the four lepers in the Book of Kings to Elijah in the Talmud. We continue now with the Mishaberach, the healing prayer. Oh, eh, let's, let's go to the healing prayer. I spoke too much, I guess, and I don't want you to stare at your piece of challah and wine. Sorry? So if anyone would like to mention a name of a loved one who is ill and in need of healing. I'm waiting for you, Carl. Michael Schneider. Rini. Le oh, Adele, sorry. Let's pray together. May the source of strength who bless the ones before us. Help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing and let us say, ah, ah, Amen. Mi sheh Bless those in need of healing with refuah shelema. The renewal of body, the renewal of spirit, and let us say, ah, ah, Amen. And we rise for the Closing prayer, Aleinu and the Kaddish. Aleinu le Shabbat Ladon Hakol, Lathed Gedula Leotzer Bereshit, Shelo Asanu Kegoye Haaratzot, Velo Samanu Kemishpechot Haadamam. 
שלא שם חלקנו כהם וגורלנו ככל המונם ואנחנו קוראים ומשתחווים ומודים לפני מלך מלכי המלכים הקדוש ברוך הוא ונאמר היה אדוני למלך על כל הארץ ביום ההוא ביום ההוא יהיה אדוני אחד ושמוהום ושמוהום ושמו אחד. On the occasion of your sight of the anniversary of death remember Richard Adler, father of Richard and grandfather of Jackie, George Black, grandfather of Myrna, David Bloom, father of Jim, Michael Anderson, brother-in-law of Paula and uncle of Josh, Morris Edelman, father of David, Barbara Eisenberg, mother of Bruce, Irving Nathan, Feather Green, father of Ross and grandfather of Dan, Adele Augusta Gross, Shamievsky, mother of Susan and grandmother of Dan, Hugh Roth, father of Jackie, Janet Gaze's mother of Joel, Perry Buchalter, husband of Lisa, Leon Gerson, father-in-law of Lenore, Dorothy Hilkoff, mother of Stephen, Norman Robbins, grandfather of Lindsay, Seymour Provost, father of Jen, Sam Feingold, father of Sharon and grandfather of Tammy, Jerry Hollinstadt, husband of Sharon and father of Tammy. Israel Etner, father of Gali, Emilia Etner, grandmother of Gali, Tanya Meyerson, mother of Dan, Hilda Geffen, mother of Bonnie, Shirley Resnick, mother of Seth, Sarah Cohen, aunt of Bonnie, Esther Rosenberg, mother of Matthew, Ronald Nathan Porter, father of Andrea, Andrew Sanquist, son of Peter. It's Huck Fishbein, father of Joetta and Sally. Alan Beyer, father of Amy. Lillian Bruno, mother of Barbara. Alan Silverberg, husband of Pat. Sandy Frank, mother of Carol. Jack Weber, father of Jeff. Marilyn Weiss, mother of Scott. Kenneth Rottenberg, brother of Lois and uncle of Janet. Maury Wise, father of Barry and grandfather of Janet. And during the month of mourning, Shloshim, remember Kerry Marilyn, uncle of Felicia. Esther Hartman, mother of Deborah, Herbert, and Eileen, and grandmother of Tamara, Casey, Matthew, Jacqueline, and Michelle, and great-grandmother of Morgan. Melvina Feldman, great aunt of Julia. Michelle Kane Cummings, mother of Risa. Helen Pine, sister of Rosalie. If you would like to mention a name that I have not mentioned. There are so many traditions about standing or not standing for the Kaddish. In some places, only the mourners stay in, stand. In some places, uh, everyone stands. Whatever your tradition is, it's absolutely kosher. It gadal v'it kadash shmei rabba. Be'alma divra chirutei ve'amlich malchutei בחייכון וביומכון ובחיי דכל בית ישראל בעגלה ובזמן קרי ואמרו אמן יהי שמי רבה מבורך לעולם ולעולמי עולמיה יתברך וישתבח ויתפאר ויתרומם ויתנשא ויתהדר ויתעלה ויתעלה על שמי דקודשה בריחו 
לעילה מכל ברכתה ושירתה, תוש ברכתה ונחמתה, דאמירן בעלמא ואמרו אמן. יהא שלמה רבה מן שמיא וחיים עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמן. עושה שלום במרומיו הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמן. עושה שלום במרומיו הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמרו אמן יעשה שלום יעשה שלום שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל יעשה שלום יעשה שלום שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל. And before the closing song, I invite you to pour another glass of wine, if you want. You can have another piece of cheese challah. Adon olam. אשר מלך, בטרם כל, יציר נבעה לעת נשא, בחפצו כל, אזי מלך שמו נקרא אדון עולם, ואחרי ככלות הכל, לבדו ימלוך נורא אדון עולם, והוא היה והוא הווה והוא יהיה בתפארה אדון עולם אדון עולם אשר מלך בטרם כל יציר נבעה לעת נשא בחפצו כל אזי מלך שמו נקרא אדון עולם והוא אחד ואין שני להמשילו להכבירה אדון עולם בלי ראשית בלי תכלית ולא העוז והמשרה אדון עולם אדון עולם אשר מלך בטרם כל יציר נבעה לעת נשא בחפצו כל Hazai Melech Shemo Nikra Adon Olam And from here we have to do it faster Vehu Eli Vechai Goali Vetzur Chevli Be'et Sara Adon Olam Vehu Nisi Hu Manos Li Menat Kosi Be'yom Ekra Adon Olam Adon Olam Asher Malach Beterem Kol Yetzir Niva Aal Et Nasa בחפצו כל, אזי מלך שמו נקרא אדון עולם איבן פאסר. בידו הפקיד רוחי, בעת תישן ואירה אדון עולם. ואם רוחי גביעתי, אדון אלי ולא אירה אדון עולם. אדון עולם, אשר מלך, בטרם כל, יציר נבעה על עת נשא. בחפצו כל, אזי מלך שמו נקרא אדון עולם. היי, יש עוד אחד. או, הם קראו את האחרון. שבת שלום. שבת שלום. אתה לא צריך ללכת לך לעונג שלכם. כמה מהדברים האלה כבר על הטבעה. לחיים. לחיים. שבת שלום.